on the side of Saigon Jokers and they will continue their invade because they do have a five-man group going up to the red buff. So Saigon Jokers spots out that invade coming in and they react well to it. How, however, they spend a flash and the jungler on the side of Bangkok Titan should be picking up on this and DD should be picking up on this and he should be trying to make some plays onto the Jinx and Trash bottom lane knowing that Jinx has used the summoner spells. So now we see Bangkok Titans camping out the brush down here, trying to get off another thing. Well, I, I guess they're just staying there so that they don't get spotted out and perhaps throwing some doubt as to where the position of the team is. Oh, actually, as they come in from the back, trying to catch Juni out of this position. Juni is caught out, but does he manage to escape? A frozen pillar goes down and Juni in lots of trouble. Flay comes in. And now they chase him all the way in as they manage to disengage. That's right, so they weren't able to actually caught, catch out Juni. He wasn't forced to burn the flash, and it does seem that the Bangkok Titans will be going in for, an, once again, another attempt at, uh, at a kill here in the lane itself. So they do manage to force the flash using the Frozen Pillar. And it does seem that they will be on their counter jungling merry way. And the fact that you do have Trundle with the teleport, he can easily just go up to the top lane whenever he wants to, which he has already used. And there he is in the top lane, kind of farming it away with QTV. So NDD does manage to pick up the red buff. Archie just trying to poke him away and deal some damage to kind of just uh, slow down his jungle pathing a bit. Well, so it was a bit of a wonky fight there at bottom lane with Bangkok Titans managed to secure the, the red buff still that they wanted in the first place. So actually we see, but however, what this actually resulted in is that Archie and Juni lost lots of lane time as now Bangkok Titans actually Soraka and Starcall at level 1 perhaps due to the early invade to actually put some pressure onto the Archie Juni bottom lane as Flay goes in onto the bottom lane. Play goes into the bottom lane, the Ignite gets down to SKLZ. SKLZ actually managing to survive with the heal and does quite a bit of damage on the both Archie as well. Juni Archie taking it quite a bit, pops the barrier down and first blood goes to Jinx there in the bot lane. So a bit of a questionable decision for Saigon Jokers to put on the aggression in that case. They have both used their summoner spells already and Bangkok Titans have been laying longer than both of them. So what happened was that Bangkok Titans, they both hit level 2 and as a result of that Saigon Jokers, they, they lost, they gave up first blood as a result. Yeah, so what we have here is now a gang coming from safety. He does pu pull in the spear, gets the stun off onto Warlock. Warlock does pop the pillar of ice and is forced to flash away from that one. So. No kills just yet in the top lane, but he is forced out of lane, so QTV should have quite a safe time farming up at the top. Now, Lee Sin is a very strong snowballing each other, as we have an engagement at mid lane here. That's right, Optimus will be forced to flash out from that one as well. Didn't, isn't really confident of using that body slam because NDD would have actually blocked the path of that body slam across the wall. So. A lot of false flashes due to the jungle pressure or even the lane pressure. But I must say that was good play down in the bot lane from SKOZ to actually bait out, wait for the Ignite to take away before using his Q. And that allowed, you know, Lloyd to actually just hammer away onto both Archie and Juni. And of course, the target that you want to kill is actually the AD carry. And he did manage to get first blood out of that, that one. So now QTV and safety going in a little bit deep onto the side of Bangkok Titan side of the map but nothing really comes out of that as we see bottom lane here doing out a bit so now the previous game we saw lots of kills lots of engagements everywhere and this game they do not want to drop up their stack they saw the previous two teams they got in lots of kills lots of engagements everywhere and this game is definitely no slack in terms of action and engagements either that's right. So what do you think about the lane matchups coming in now that we have a little bit of breathing room? So you know that Lee Sin, uh, we originally thought that Lee Sin might go into the jungle, but instead they switched it up a bit and now we have a Lee Sin Trundle um, top lane matchup. So it's a bit interesting with the decision of to send Lee Sin into the top lane. In the current meta game, we usually see very tanky champions being sent to the top lane. Tanky champions such as Shyvana, Shyvana, Dr. Mundo, and Renekton, and Trundle does so well against them simply because his ultimate steals away so much of the defensive stats here. However, now Q QTV is a very good, strong Lee Sin player, and Lee Sin, Lee Sin is a champion that doesn't, that doesn't really have to build tanky, he can build in, in lots of ways, and he's also a very strong snowballing champion. So the gang earlier from safety should put him and give him the, 
to necessarily lead the Hades over Trado to bully him in lane. Yes, right. Well, well, actually taking a bunch of damage up in the top lane. The Sonic Wave resonating strike combo lands along with the Ignite. Will he be able to survive from that one? No, the health potion is not able to keep him alive and the Ignite ticks allows QTV to pick up the kill from that one. He will continue to push the top lane wave though and that's just going to be that for the top lane. So after being forced out of his lane, Warlock seems to have a very hard time against this early level aggression coming from Lee Sin. So Lee Sing proving to, the, to be the lame bully we talked about down there and getting a queue in the favor of Saigon Jokers against Bangkok Titans. So looking at the rest of the, the lane matchup, Zix versus Grogdas, this is what we were talking about earlier. This is bullies are both very comfort picks for the Southeast Asian regions. Champions with very mid laners with very strong wave clear and mid laners with lots of engagement potential. Zix Zix on the side of Bangkok Titans will be looking to pick up that Athene's unho uh, unholy growth so that he can get the sustain up to, to, to get the wave clear that we to get the wave clear going and perhaps getting some rotations and some ganks onto the bottom lane in order to match the global presence from the Pantheon jungle. Uh, Judy, you saw that actually the roam coming from safety and Judy being a little bit too aggressive and kind of um, allowing Lloyd and SKLZ to predict a gank. Um, incoming from safety, so they very intelligently back off from that lane, and they just kind of um, what do you call that? Just go back to go back to safety from safety. Well, going going to safety from safety. I I, I just love his name. He always lets us <laughs> crack such jokes. So now we actually see here Saigon Jokers taking a 400 goalie over Bangkok Titans. Actually comes from the leasing the leasing CS advantage over the Toronto in top lane. Most of the other lanes are actually quite even. Oh, actually, in fact, mid lane is up Yo, on CS. Mid lane. mid lane is actually up on CS. Optimus is one has been one of the strongest mid laners as we see here. QTV once again bullying Warlock out of lane as Warlock drops extremely low. That's right, so QTV just once again showing his aggression, he does have the pickaxe as well as the longsword and is able to just use that early level combination from Tempest as well as that sustain from his um, safeguard, the second cast of his safeguard to um, just do, just to sustain in lane as much as possible. Of course the Sonic Wave resonating strike combo will just pick him out instantly and if QTV gets a good, well we do have the um, Ultimate coming in from safety and SKLZ is the one that gets stunned wow. up. But look at the amount of armor that's actually onto SKLZ. But now Lloyd actually gets caught in a flame trap, but pops the barrier. I don't think he will be able to survive that one. NDD actually goes in for the um, counter kill onto safety, but a good play actually prevents him from getting a kill. But nevertheless, Zix is actually the one that's able to pick up safety. Juni takes a tower shot, but is able to survive. Intrezo comes in from the sidelines, and now he has to pick which. Champion he wants to kill and now he just stands there and says, Oh, I'm just gonna wait for my cooldown to come up, throw a bouncing bomb at you, and you die. You know, a lot of people like to give Optimus the credit for Saigon Joker's success in the previous season, but a lot of people tend to overlook the support, and that is Juni on his trash. His trash has been phenomenal. Every time he gets that, he lands those amazing hooks. Like, like just now, he saw the Soraka flash, he straight away went in for the hook and caught the Soraka at maximum range, pulling him in and securing two kills for the side of Saigon Jokers. Yeah, that's right, and... From here on out, let's kind of talk about how the lanes have gone. Um, we, we, talk, we touched about it earlier, but the mid and the top lane for the Saigon Jokers have been going extremely well. And why is that? How is the matchup kind of winning? We know why the top lane is winning because earlier we saw Warlock just get zoned out completely. But what about the mid lane? Well, the mid lane, Gragas was actually taking quite a large CSD on top of, of Zix at first, but with the two kills Zix got from the, from the bottom lane engaged early, he might be able to pull that deficit back as an engagement that happens at bottom lane. That's right, so a little bit of harass coming in back from, from Lloyd as well as Archie, but the good thing about a Soraka lane is that uh, you do you are able to kind of sustain your AD carry, so Warlock does pop his sub subjugate and just gets the pillar of ice down to slow on QTV. QTV does manage to pick up the Zoraya though. NDD here capping the brush. Juni might be in a bit of trouble. NDD still holding his um, 
ultimate and not actually using it, only using it at the last second, the culling does come out. Safety comes in from the back lines and tries to go in for the counter game. Will he be able to get the stun off to either um, Lloyd or even NDD? Doesn't seem like that's the case. But nevertheless, uh, you know, it, it makes me wonder why NDD held his ultimate for so long. So safety actually letting his teammates retreat to safety in that situation. That's right, he does pop um, his head by and says hello, um, preventing the continued aggression coming in from the Bangkok Titans. So now this Soraka Lucian Bolle, now this is the question as we start to move away from the laning phase as rotations start to come in from the mid and junglers. So how well does this Soraka and Lucian, Lucian Bolle work out? We saw earlier at the start of the game where they, where they managed to use the repeated sustain on Lucian to continuously bully out the bottom lane of Trash and Jinx, resulting in a CS lead for Lucian. But now that Jinx picked up two kills from the gang from Oh, hang on. Whoa, we may see SKLZ get caught out here. He does get this slow onto him. The death sentence as well as the stun will pop. But look at him out. He, health, he can actually just regenerate back from that one Astro Blessing. But nevertheless, Archie is able to get a kill onto that one. Lloyd very intelligently just backs off from that one, knowing that his support will definitely go down from that kill. Warlock and QTV once again just try to do it out. But QTV doesn't seem... Well, it's... Doesn't seem like he, he was able to get away, but just a simple dragon's kick to the back and sends Warlock just flying away, not allowing Warlock to get the kill. So Saigon Jokers use, using the fact that they know that they have picked up some kills to pick up this dragon. That's right, so they do go in for the dragon, a great smite safety, just holding his smite up to the last moment, allowing Entrezzle's Mega Inferno Bomb to come in and just um, kind of nuke the dragon before he actually gets the smite down. Actually, I like the way how Saigon Jokers has picked out, has identified the weaknesses of Soraka in this situation. Soraka is a champion who provides a sustain, but she doesn't really have a real stun or much CC of her own. I mean, she has lots of kills, that's really cool and all, but when people have their summoner spells up, they drop the, the ignite onto you, and it becomes really hard to escape from people if you do not have your flash up. As we see down here now, QTV knows that Warlock Subjugate is down and because he built damage, he's being able to bully out Warlock so hard as he uses the wall, uh, wall jump to chase down Warlock as well. That's right, Warlock is forced to flash away. QTV still seems to have the upper hand though, pops the Ignite as well as Resonating Strike. The Wish comes out from Soraka but that's not able to actually um, get Warlock away from that. Prevent Warlock from dying. Sorry, I lo lost my train of thought there. So QTV proving to be a lane bully and knowing the matchup really well. It, it might be a bit careless on the side of Bangkok Titans to pick the Tronto in that situation after seeing the Lee Sin on the side of Saigon Jokers. But there was Saigon Jokers showing the fact, showing what made them such a strong team in the previous season of the GPL. Very That's right, that sentence actually on. goes in. SKLZ actually gets the play onto him and doesn't seem like he's able to survive from that one. Juni actually is the one that picks up the kill and not only that, they're actually chasing on to Lloyd, but NDD comes in with the great After prison, the ultimate comes out, safety gets taken down quite low. NDD actually manages to pick up the kill on the, uh, the death sentence. Will miss Optimus from the back, goes in with the body slam as well as barrel combination to pick up the kill onto NDD. So it's going to be a one for two trade in favor of the Saigon Jokers. So Saigon Jokers choosing to have the focus on him as the action isn't over just yet. Yeah, that's right. Lloyd will be taken down quite low. Juni is forced to pop the barrier. Uh, sorry, not Juni. Juni is actually taken down low, but Archie is the one that forced to pop the barrier and he just walks in, tries to get a kill onto that one, but Intrezzo goes in with a flashy flash into bouncing bomb combination and picks up the kill onto Archie as well. So lots of lots of action happening at the bottom lane down here. And we saw actually 3 for 2, um, 3 for 2 in the favor of Saigon Jokers as a result of that, of, of that situation. And, and now as it stands, Saigon Jokers have taken a 4,000 goal lead 14 minutes into the game. Yeah, so, so let's kind of take a look at what kind of items we have. On one end, we do have BKT um, in Trezo getting a bunch of kills onto himself. And whereas SAJ has kind of held dominance in the mid lane as well as the top lane um, respectively. So this is what, uh, I'm looking at Lee Sin's item, this is what I was talking about earlier. Lee Sin doesn't really have to build tanky unlike the rest of the, 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 like the, rest of the current other 
flavor of the month top lane champions. So we actually see him building a Ravenous Hydra on himself down here, so that Trundle Subjugate doesn't do so much to him as it would uh, compared to Renekton or Shavana. Yeah, QTB actually gets caught out a bit, get, eats a charm to the face with a lot of NDD onto the side. But Grand Skyfall comes in, SKLZ gets caught out, gets a death sentence onto him, and an easy kill pickup for SHARG. Once again, Juni is showing why he is the best trash in the region and not green tea with excellent hooks down there the moment you are out of position hook comes onto you maximum range pulls you in and secures a kill for his team i don't know your claim of juni being the best trash in the region but nevertheless the zix mega follow bomb will come in and try to clear as much of the wave as possible but we've seen safety's gangs actually work quite well on our qtv trying to go in 1v2 so he puts in the Sonic Wave resonating strike combo gets onto NDD. The wish comes out and tries. He still continues to actually get onto NDD as much as possible. Now, Warlock is the main focus of both Optimus and QDB's attention. It seems that he will go down very easily from the displacement of the explosive cast as well as that barrel roll. So now this is Saigon Jokers using the strengths of their team composition coming in using the mobility to be all over Bangkok Titans team composition. You see gangs happening at the bottom and every time they use this mobility advantage they use this mobility advantage really well, making sure that they always have the man advantage whenever they pick these fights with Bangkok Titans. So not much action happening now in the game, but nevertheless Lloyd and SKOZ originally had a very um, decisive first blood coming into the lanes itself, but we do have action. QTV once again using the mobility of Lee Sin just easily used the safeguard to the ward just to escape. Optimus now being caught out quite deep in the enemy's jungle, but Intrezo pops in with the shutdown, gets the blue buff transfer with a great pinpoint combination with the permafrost onto NDD, it didn't seem like Optimus would have been able to get away from that one. So a bit careless by Optimus down there, standing in his opponent's jungle with no real backup around him and he got caught up and he got punished because of that. So uh, looking at the items now, actually Leeson has a 50 CS lead over the triangle in this case. So this goes back to the big, big and bands. I, I wanted to say this, uh, Saigon Jokers, they are a very tricky and very intelligent team when it comes to big and bands. As we have a fight at the bottom lane. Yeah, that's right. The Grand Skyfall does come down. He caught, catches SKLZ out once more. Safety just tanking as many turret shots as possible. And a great depth sentence once more by Juni allows him to actually pick up the kill onto SKLZ. So every time the Grand Skyfall comes out, it does seem that SKLZ is the target of choice. And it's something that I really like from SAJ because normally if you take out the Soraka, that prevents any sort of additional healing to come out from her. And if once that healer is gone, you can easily just turn focus to the rest of your squishy champions because Soraka actually provides a lot of armor as a lot of additional health to all your squishy champions. So Lloyd and RJ actually kind of dueling it up. Lloyd is actually forced to use the dash to walk away from that one. So Archie showing that he has the item advantage, already completed the blood test, and is able to bully Lloyd out of the game. Uh, out of the lane, sorry, not out of the game. It would be quite sad to be, get bullied out of the game. As we start to see the outer towers go down on the side of Bangkok Titans, as Archie picks up the, the bottom lane tower in the favor of Saigon Jokers. So now this is where Bangkok Titans have to prove their worth as one of the newer teams in the GPL. How are they going to handle the rotations coming in from the Saigon Jokers? That's right, so now here we do have both teams actually posturing up for um, a dragon control. So BKT actually does start the dragon at this point of time, but Walla actually gets a great death sentence onto him, does take a bunch of damage. The explosive cast comes out, does as AJ decide to commit to this. The hook goes on to Intrezo, but nevertheless, we do have NDD get taken down very low. Safety actually falls to flash away, he does go down, but Nevertheless, it's actually a 4v5, and what SAJ is doing at this point of time is actually to delay Bangkok Titans from going back into the base. This allows QTV to pick up the top lane turret, and will he actually go for the inhibitor? I don't think so. So now we do have an exposed inhibitor um, in Bangkok Titans' base, and this the, the stall from SAJ actually prevented Bangkok Titans from taking the, away the... Whoa, a great... Death sentence, but Intrezo decides to flash away. But as I was saying, the delay coming up from SAJ prevents Bangkok Titans from taking the dragon and allow them to take the top 
inhibitory instead. So Saigon Joker is showing that they understand this objective game very well on their Bangkok Titans. They said this, they decided to throw the gamble dice a bit, sacrifice top lane for a while and group up and try to take Dragon. Saigon Jokers, they had their vision was around the area. They knew that around this point of time, Dragon is going to start being an objective of contention. And they went in there, zone up Bangkok Titans, while QTV made a very good call to stay top and picked up one of the, one of the base turrets in their favor. Yeah, that's right. And in that, in, while you were talking, J Storm, what SAJ decided to do was to they knew where all the members of BKT was, and they just sent two members to easily pick up the dragon. So this has been the story of Saigon Joker's extremely solid run in the previous season. Very good decision making, very clean rotations, and very very strong very strong short calls in terms of controlling objectives and where to go and what to do next and now they are showing this objective mastery over bangkok titans which has given them an 8000 goal lead now i really must say that safety has been all in the right places at the right time every time he launches his grand skyfall or launches himself into the air they always manage to pick up a kill off from that one he as you can see he has already eight assists out of the of uh, 13 kills that the Saigon Jokers have already gotten. Well, actually watching this game, I think Saigon Jokers will definitely continue to do well in the rest of the season. The safety, well, I, I might have said that he is kind of one of the weak... Maybe he... I have said before that he is perhaps the weak link in the Saigon Jokers team. Like, in certain games, we've just seen him like, completely flounder and disappoint for the rest of the team. But however, with the current meta, with Pentium being so yeah, good... Yeah, we do have an initiation coming out. from NDD. He po pulls off that um, gl Glacial Prison and uh, Archie doesn't seem to actually go down from this one. Junior actually misses the death sentence. But nevertheless, NDD is the one that gets busted down by Optimus here. So... The Grand Skyfall will come in, does not hit anyone, actually catches on the SKLZ, SKLZ is forced to flash away now, safety in a little bit of trouble here. Lloyd trying to do as much as possible, but QTV joins in the fight, gets a kick out here, tries out a great shutdown kill by Archie, and what an in initiation from the flank coming from QTV. So, the collapse from SAJ has done so well because... BKT picked the fight 3v5. Safety wasn't there, QTV wasn't there. Safety joined in with the Grand Skyfall. QTV came in from the side and actually got a pick onto Intrezzo. So once again, great coordination as, you have, as you've been talking about by SAJ. So once again, Saigon Joker is using the coordination and using the mobility of the team composition to punish the movements and rotations of Bangkok Titans. If you try, if you think you have got a good fight against them, nope, Lee Sin is going to fly and kick one of your team members, Grand Skyfall is going to come in and wreck your day. So actually just now what I was talking about was that how I feel that safety has actually stepped up his game a lot and I think that because of their Saigon Jokers, they have covered a lot of their weaker grounds coming from what I've seen so far coming into this game, their engagements have been very have been a lot cleaner as what we have seen and I think that they are definitely a reckoning force to be to be dealt with. Now honestly I feel that the picks coming in from the Saigon Jokers really suit their player style. QTV is the kind of player that um, likes to win his lane and comes into a team fight and makes an impact. We saw earlier he came in from the side, go in with the Dragon's Kick and just completely um, isolated in Trezor and allow them to pick a simple kill. Actually Optimus here meeting with SKLZ, the Sonic Wave resonating strike combo will come out and it's an easy kill for QTV. NDD, Lloyd, and Intrezzo now really want to get a kick. And a great kick back onto Lloyd will just allow him to get busted down instantly. Now, NDD is in a world of trouble at this point of time. He will be get cowed by the Grand Skyfall as well. He will decide to dodge that one. QTV just picks up another kill in that fight. So, two kills for him in that one, picking up both NDD as well as SKLZ. So. So QTV completely racking face on Bangkok Titans as he comes in there, kicks a few other team members and uses his sonic wave to make sure there's no escape for anyone on the side of Bangkok Titans. Yeah, and I was talking a little bit about it earlier, and that I really like the champion picks coming out from SAJ, not because of how the team composition 
sort of is, while SG, SVG does Baron here. But QTV is the kind of player that likes to win his lane and just makes an impact in the team fights, as we saw countless of times already. He has four kills on himself, and every time he comes in, he just launches such a great combination. So Lloyd actually. <laughs> Using the dash to get out of the explosive cast, not bad now. QTV wants to try to deal as much as possible, gets in onto the back lines of BKT, but that shutdown will go on to NDD. Nevertheless, SAJ manages to delay BKT long enough for them to take clean Baron, and QTV is the one, the only man to fall. And I think that's overall a gigantic win for Saigon Jokers. And I was talking earlier, like I said, before I got interrupted by the countless of fights, I like QTV on Lee Sin because that allows him to kind of win the lane early if you have some pressure from the jungler and just make such big plays as the top lane Lee Sin. Nevertheless, safety is another aggressive carry south jungler and Pantheon is really one of the perfect picks coming in from him. And as, we, as I say that, Warlock just gets decimated because he just stayed way too long that once he got caught by the zap, it was very easy for SAJ just to just continue and pick on a kill. So Saigon Joker is showing killing instinct. They smell water, they, they smell blood in the water, they jumped in and they picked up a kill on the Warlock. But speaking of winning his lane, Lee Sin is actually like almost 90, almost 90 CS on top of his lane opponent in Trando. It's actually 81 at this point, and he's 4 kills on top of that as well. So definitely, QTV on Lee Sin has definitely been snowballing this game in the favor of Saigon Jokers. Yeah, Saigon Jokers playing a very clean game coming into the mid game. Their decision making is quite impeccable, I must add. And the fact is that QTV seems extremely comfortable, at least in safety seems to be at home with Pantheon. Every time he comes in from the Grand Skyfall, he'll just manage to catch someone on the edge and pick a kill because the instant stun coming in from his Aegis or the protection will just allow him to. Um, get that stun off quite instantly. So the Baron buff here, he is going to recall and that's just going to... Aegis of Zionia. Yeah. Aegis of Zionia it is. As now we see QTV pushing up the bottom lane and continuing to be the end, to, to be the pain in Bangkok Titan's side throughout this entire game. Yeah, it's quite interesting. They decided to we may see the League of Black Keepers come back, if, if, if you know what I mean, because we have QTV completing his own Black Cleaver. Safety also completes his own Black Cleaver, and this is going to allow the AoE damage from Archie uh, whenever he switches to Fishbones to actually just deal that much more damage. Because having the armor straight on two Black Cleavers onto your team is just going to allow any more, any more AD to just be amplified as damage. Not to mention the Super Mega Death Rocket doing Super Mega lots of damage when it finally hits onto anyone on the side of Bangkok Titans. Mm. So we see here Saigon Jokers picking up some objectives as they continue to choke Bangkok Titans out of the game. So Bangkok Titans doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like the Bangkok Titans is able to do anything at this moment. It seems that they are just milling about the, about the base and they are not actually trying to make any plays. As I say that, they actually go in for initiation, but the explosive cast will actually allow them to get a... Uh, allow them to... allow SAJ to prevent initiation coming in from BKT. And not only that, it's going to be a 4v5 fight if they do decide to initiate onto this one because QTV is constantly pushing down the mid lane inhibitor turret. I think one of the biggest stories of this game would be the Lee Sin versus Trundle decision. I mean, I've been talking about it the entire game, but I feel that when you pick Trundle, you actually kind of run a risk. Run a risk that Trundle loses one view onto someone else. When you play Trundle, you want him to be able to... Whoa, we do have QTV himself. coming in. He does not manage to get that Dragon's Kick back into his entire team. He does get picked up. Picked off by Entrezzo though, and now it does seem that SAJ is on the back foot. Juni will go down next. BKT has yet to lose a member, and as I say, the NDG will go down. Entrezzo is the next one to go down, and Archie is getting extremely excited, and he will just be chucking fishbone rockets all day long. Optimus just juggling the tower hits, goes in back for the body slam, and picks up the kill onto SKLZ. Warlock is the only one that survived here, so... BKT thought they had an upper hand, but SAJ just showed how much more ahead they are. They are almost 20,000 gold ahead of the Bangkok Titans at this moment. 
Well, for those of you watching, it might seem like a bit of a silly decision for QTV to just jump in like that and instantly get burst down by BKT. But what he was really doing as Warlock gets picked down really low. That's right, he just goes down, gets the perfect explosive class from Optimus and just isolates him completely. Both Nexus turrets has gone down, but as you were saying, QTV's attempt to go in and disrupt that BKT. Well, Hang on. As I say that, Juni actually has to pop the barrier. NDD decides to focus on to safety instead of Archie. And Archie gets excited, gets away, but not far away enough to prevent Lloyd from actually going in. I believe SAJ has definitely overstayed their welcome. Optimus uses the body slam to get as far away as possible as we saw that SKLZ wanted, wanting to place a ward over the wall, but not really uh, succeeding in that sense. So Bangkok Titans picking up some kills for themselves as they punish and overstings Saigon Jokers. So what I was talking about QTV is that he decided to jump in and he says that okay, we have an item lead, we have the advantages lead, they identified that we already hit this power spike and you have not yet. And Bangkok Titans have not hit this power spike yet. So he just jumps in on and engages on the robot team, forcing them to use their CC and spells onto him so that Archie, we saw the extremely aggressive flash over the wall to clean up the rest of Bangkok Titans team. That's right, Archie just came in, got excited, got a few kills and allowed Optimus to um, get his cooldowns up and just kind of clean up the rest of the fight. So Archie and Optimus being the main brunt of the damage right now with safety and QTV just wants to go into the back line and disrupt the the entire Bangkok Titans team as much as possible. So we see a 19,000 gold lead in the favor of Saigon Jokers and 10 turrets to one here. As QTV comes around the side, does not manage to land that sonic wave combination, so that's not going to be a kill coming in for himself. But nevertheless, Bangkok Titans doesn't seem to have an answer against this um, powerhouse of SAJ with an almost 20,000 gold lead. Well, I think the Saigon Jokers, they rotate well. They're a very intelligent team when it, comes to be, when it comes to playing. And some high mobility compositions, I think we will see this as a staple of, of their picks as we see them continue to play throughout the rest of the season. It does seem that SAJ wants to just close it out as much as possible. NDD goes in for a four-man lockup with his ultimate, but great zoning from Archie. He single-handedly just takes down two members of the team, gets excited, and just will just force every single one from BKT back. He just wants to hit onto NDD, gets a doesn't get a fourth kill, but instead SAJ just takes the win from the Nexus.